Hey guys, Dark Recycling FPV, and I'm getting ready to build a Rapture, uh, the four inch HD version. Now it's gonna be HD or analog, depending on what you want, but we put the HD in the name just because we want people to know that you can uh, have it HD, okay? So let me go ahead and just shift on over here and get started what we're gonna do. So we've got all the parts laid out here. Uh, this is one of my favorite frames, one of the strongest frames I've ever made. Uh, and uh, as we shift from what we're doing with our company, one of the things we are gonna be doing is shifting back to doing more custom framework, okay? So get ready for what uh, so some cool things. Now, it's not gonna be like the common stuff that you see everywhere, because that's boring, anybody can do it, and there's no talent in that anymore. Um, but what, it, what we are doing is we're making more, focusing more on strength and design and going for uniqueness. So be prepared to see what we come up with next. So anyways, to get started with this right now, as you can see, we have the press nuts here, and the difference this time is I'm not gonna actually press the nuts into this frame until I put the screws in there, and I'm gonna show you guys how that works, okay? So let's lay out, we got our four, four inch arms here, we got our cross brace here. We've got our front bumper and rear bumpers here. This is going to be the front. This is going to be the rear. We've got our uh, braces for our arms here. We've got our top plate and our bottom plate. Okay. So <clears throat> to start with this, a couple ways we can do that. And be understand that I may change this. When I build it this time, I may go ahead and change the length of the screws depending on what I think. So uh, I may change this and, and redo the kit online to, um, to adjust for if I think screws should be longer or not. Uh, given some change that we made here. So uh, let's look at this first. So we have our arms here and the way these arms are gonna go, it's pretty simple. They're, the arms are gonna fit very easily and there is a rear, there is a front bumper here, right? That would go underneath, sorry, this one, the front bumper will be the one that has the same angle as the front here. So this is how this goes. And basically what you end up with is you end up with about, um, I believe you're gonna end up with about nine to 11 millimeters here. As a matter of fact, let me get the calipers and just measure for sure because I know that we made some changes on the carbon fiber. Uh, let me find my calipers here, there they are. Okay, so let's check this out real quick. All right, let's zero that out. And let's see, we're gonna have, I believe three here. So yeah, we're gonna run about three uh, and three. I'm just kind of getting an estimate here. And then this one will be about five. So yeah, you've got about 11 millimeters of carbon fiber, give or take because we're not getting an exact three, so you're gonna fluctuate plus or minus a little bit. So you've got almost 11 millimeters. Let's just say the term almost 11 millimeters of carbon fiber as your front bumper. And the reason I did that was for impact. So when you hit now, your impact of your, your frame is gonna be, the front of the frame is gonna be hit with 11 millimeters right there. And it, that's a pretty solid, it's extremely solid actually. All right, now um, let's see, we did press nuts here and then we did standoff. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm going to, and I'm going to just test between here. So this is going to go right here, and we're going to go put this through here, and we're going to go through this one right here. Okay, now this will be where a standoff goes. So you can just finger tighten this down and put your standoff right there, and that'll hold somewhat in place. Okay, now we're going to do the same on the other side. So let's just take the other arm, put it right there, go to the center with the screw here. We line this up, all right, and then put your standoff as well. Now, when we ship these, you're most likely going to get the arms folded in at some point because we're not going to ship them fully extended, but we will ship them assembled, okay? But for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and assemble it. So I'm going to put the press nut right here, just like this. And I'm going to take our screw, feed it right in there like that. And I'm going to tighten it, but I'm not going to tighten it too hard right now because I still have to get ready to put the brace on. But as you crank this down, that'll pull the press nut in and that'll pull it into the carbon fiber. Let's do the next one here. So put this through just like that. And you can put the press nut on top of that screw if you want and just kind of spin it by hand. And then what you'll do is just hold the top of it with your finger. And as you turn the screw, the screw will pull it into the carbon fiber and it'll automatically start tightening itself. I can feel it already tightening. I don't want it to get too tight, but if you look at the width there, um, so you're gonna be, let's see, two, eight, two, eight, five, six, uh, four, eight, five, six, nine. So let's just say 10, six, maybe somewhere between 10, 10, seven. Yeah, so you're about 10, seven, five. Um, and if I calibrate this, it's probably gonna be somewhere between 10, seven, five and 11 millimeters. Pretty hefty right there, but the frame still remains light. All right, now the next thing is gonna to be to do the back of the frame, which is the same exact concept, except the bumper on the back is a little bit more angled. So it's a little, it's got a deeper curve actually. So arms are exactly the same, no matter if you're in the front or in the back there, the arms are the same length. Uh, so they, you do not have to have, a, there's no difference between a front arm and a rear arm or a left and a right arm on the front and rear side. So let's put that in here. Oops, 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 oops. First thing we do is go through the bumper. All right, just like that, then go through the arm, then go through the frame, then you can add your standoff, just like this, finger tighten that down, and you're in good shape. Let's go ahead and do the next one, put the arm in, 
right there. Line up the holes as best as you can. Put the screw in. Okay, we'll get that through just like that. Put the standoff in. And just finger tighten that down. There you go. Same thing applies for the uh, press nuts. I'm going to do the same thing as we did in the front. Put that on there. Line up the screw. And then just gently tighten it down. Nothing too crazy. Just like that. And we'll do the same with this one. Okay. There we go. And I think here is where I may change. Right, I'm about to get to the point where I think I'm going to change the actual screw that we use. So bear with me a second because I do have them. I'm going to go, the, the initial build had 14 millimeter screws, which are the green ones that you see right here. And the yellow ones that we used when we put through the press nuts are 16 mil. And because these next ones are going to go through here and go into the standoffs, I think I'm going to actually use the larger screw. So I may change this. Uh, I'm going to probably do that. So I've got a set of screws right here just in case. All right. Once we get to this point, we have this cross brace right here. This actually goes like this. And then the brace goes to the uh, arm. So if you were to look at this, you can tell that you've got two different lengths. All right. And the, on, on here, you have a M3 hole and an M2. The M2 hole goes to the arm and the M3 hole goes to the brace. And then the longer one, the M3 goes to the brace here and the M2 goes right there. And you would fasten that through to the motor that you're using. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here for the front, so I'll put the M3 hole here. Now, here's where I'm probably gonna switch, and the question I have, or what I'm gonna think about, is whether I'm gonna use the 16 or not, and by the looks of it, uh, I think I will. I think we are gonna switch the 16, so um, I will change that on the website, so there will only be, and, and right here is where you would add your screw to that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this here, and put this one in here just like this, and I'm gonna pull another 16 from my bin here. Put that in. All right, and we'll finger tighten these, nothing too crazy. But as you can see, when you line these up, these would line up right here with the motor mounts right there, okay? So not only do you have 11 millimeters of carbon fiber, almost 11 millimeters, but you've got another a carbon fiber brace here uh, and in this carbon, there's a five millimeter thick brace and this brace or this bracket and this brace right here is, is hitting it. So one thing that we wanted to avoid and one thing I wanted to avoid was the idea of um, these brackets that people use that go from arm to arm. All I, all I can see in that is that as you apply pressure, as you have impact to one, you're now forcing impact to the other arm, which I think is unnecessary. So what we did is we forced the uh, bracket to feed back into the center of the frame, and that being the next thickest part of the entire build. I have no problem with that at all, all right? And it's proven to be extremely effective. So, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this around, and we're gonna use the same length, uh, 16 mil, to go here. Let me get that through this real quickly. Feed it through there. And again, we'll use our standoff to tighten that down. Now, if you need, let me explain to you. If you need the space, if one of these standoffs is in your way, this frame is built so that all you need, you don't even need to have the standoffs because the top plates are very thick and very strong. So you could literally just put um, a, a, a nut here if you wanted to tighten it down or if you needed to remove one of these so that you had space for one of your um, flight controller or ESC or whatever it is, you could easily do that too. I just give you the option by giving you four and I give you all the hardware so that you can put the center four in here if you want. All right, so we're gonna do the last one right here. It's a very easy frame. I designed this off of my Quattro frame but made this modular so that you can swap the parts out uh, instead of having it as a unibody. Um, and this has really proven to be one of my strongest frames. And this is the frame design that got me, uh, I, I flew 20 minutes on uh, uh, when we were doing the testing and our goal was to get to 30. And I don't think it's gonna be too difficult, but I have since put myself into other projects just to test things out. All right, so these are the extra 12 millimeter or 14 mil that we're not gonna use. So I will make that change on the website. Now, if we go for the top plate itself right here, we just put the top plate on, you're getting uh, your 10 millimeter screws. So one, two, I'm not sure, three, no, that's right, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, 
So now, oops, sorry. Now we're going to go ahead and just tighten these down. All right. All right, so now those are tight. Now if you wanted to, obviously you'd go back down and tighten everything else. Um, I am going to tighten these just for now, but then I'm going to loosen them because we're getting ready to shift this out to a customer. All right. And there we go, okay? So this is all tightened down. Now if you want to tighten down the press nuts, you can just keep cranking those down there and you'll be just fine. So these will tighten down perfectly and they will not come loose. So do not worry about that. Um, I don't really care. I, I can tell you that uh, depending on the type of press nut, the idea is for it to fasten hard to the frame so that you do not have to put a nut on top of it by any means. But at the same time, let me explain to you that almost all press nuts can be pulled out easily by simply unscrewing the screw a little bit and tapping it or putting the screw in reverse on the top of the press nut and pulling it up. So they're not necessarily intended to never come out as much as they are intended to stay in place properly and hold that screw in place and not loosen. And these will not loosen at all, that much I can tell you. So there you go right there. So that is the frame in itself right here. Everything is solid and ready to go. And now to get it ready for shipping, here's what we do. We simply take this screw here. We will loosen this. Okay, let's take it out. Fold the arm uh, down. Put the press nut back right here. Now once you tighten that screw fully, that press nut will grab into the carbon fiber and won't pop out. I just don't want to crank it down right now. So you put it like that. There's your one. All right. And then we'll do the second one here. Put this down, bring the arm down, put this back in. Okay. Fold this up if you want, just like that. If you're trying to keep the packaging small, all the braces will go back. Okay, so just like that, these braces will sit. And then this one, we'll do the same. Unscrew it. Bring the arm forward. Put the screw back in to hold the press nut in place. There you go. Bring it back, bring it back, and that's it. There's the frame right there, broken down, folded, and ready to be shipped. Hope that's helped you guys. I, I, I'm excited. I've got a lot of people enjoying these. We've got a lot more coming uh, off the block now. I am, I am cutting them um, daily. I mean, we are actually making a lot of headway here to cut them daily. Uh, everything else looks great. So this is it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, listen, have a great weekend. Spend time with your family, guys. Remember, you don't know how much time you have left, so go make the most of it with your family. You can always, always fly later, okay? For my family and yours, God bless. Be safe, and we will see you soon. Bye.